guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And what I want to do in this video is take a look at the current Wixwell Heroes Path. Now, like many of us, you were probably expecting to see a Titan event start either today or tomorrow based on the way that we've had it in the past five months, where there's always been like a fusion for three weeks and then like a week and a half to a two week Titan event. But this time, it doesn't seem to be that we're going to be getting it, unless by the time I finish recording this video, which is kind of like the day that the Heroes Path has started, unless they suddenly drop it on our laps, probably tomorrow, which doesn't seem to be the case, then it looks like we're not going to have a Titan event. But instead, we're going to be giving the soul for the hero that we've just fused, the soul for the champion, in the Heroes Path, right? This is the way they've always done it. You get the fusion, and then they give you the soul for the fusion. What I want to really do is kind of have a look to see is it better for us to have a Titan event where the kind of costs are spread across a period of a week and a half and we get lots more rewards? Or is it better to just have like a one-off bump cost to go, hey, if you want the soul, it's going to cost you everything in this one three-day window and that's it. Let's take a look. So if you haven't caught my Hero's Path video from yesterday, you can take a look at that and see how this is broken down. But on average, it's roughly around about 20 sacred shards for the five star soul that is effectively the cost 20 sacred shards for the five star soul and if you wanted to you could offset it with champion training which is what i'm not really factoring in here so it's basically to get a five star soul which is normally the capstone reward of what you really want from the titan event it's a 20 sacred shards now what we normally do with a titan event is we kind of have our own fusion guide on hellhades.com where we kind of see you know, we, we track it for you. We put in little different tips and hints. We link to all the different Google Sheets and everything that we generate to try and help you through the journey of collecting the soul from the hero's path and the Titan events and every, all those different events that are part of this Titan event model. So I pulled up the one from the Armands event where there was an Armands five-star soul, which is more closely aligned to what we would expect to see. And basically, these are the rewards you have available to you here. Now, if anyone doesn't know what a Titan event is, it's effectively a, a sort of a wrapper event. It sits above all these other events. You do a bunch of different events like Dragon, Spider, Dungeon Divers, Artifact Enhancement, Heroes Path, you name it. And it gives you Titan event points. You collect those points and then eventually you will get the rewards when you pass through all different milestones. It's normally about 1500 in total for you to get the capstone reward you want. Sometimes, like with the Makage one, they put it at like the four star one which means that it's like at the, the fourth milestone, so it's not as expensive. But at 1,500, normally they give you 1,750 points. So you can skip 250 points of all of the events, and it lasts about a week and a half to two weeks. And we can see the rewards we're getting here are very similar to what we see in the Heroes Path. We have Mythical Tomes. We have Eternal Soul Coins. We have some Chaos Powder. We have an Avatar. We have the Five Star Soul. We've got an Immortal Soul Stone, Chaos Dust. The quantities are increased, but the type of rewards remain the same. We do have a few extra things like mythical charms here kind of make an appearance. We also have some a few more shards that make an appearance here. And we also have things like random player and play points and, and a bunch of different things. Sometimes like it's a six star mythical chaos or in a barrel. But generally, if you compare the hero's path to the Titan event, the rewards are very similar, but the quantities are somewhat more. You can generally get about 50, like 30% more, which you'd expect because a hero's path is a three day event. This is a two week event for a Titan event. And we can see that the Heroes calendar here is here. We've got all the different events that are happening. There's a Heroes Path where there is also a Deck of Fates. There's also a Dungeon Divers. There's also all these different things. Typically, there's three summoning events and you can't really skip all of them, right? You can only skip 250 points. And you can see like that, for example, the first event that we have here, which is the Heroes Path event. This was a summoning souls and summoning champions. And you can see there's 200 points. If you skipped it, you're already down with just 50 points left. If we go down towards like the summon rush on day four, you can see there was 300 points available. So again, you can skip the 150, but if you've skipped the previous one, you can't skip the 150. So you do have to do a fair amount of summoning. So what I've done is I've taken this information from our tracked logic here from this event, and I've plugged it into a spreadsheet that we can see how much resources do we need to get the five star soul. Because that's what we really want to see. How much effort do we have to do? And then also the comparison of time. Because the hero's path, we need everything in a three day window. The Titan event it needs to be spread over a two week window. So that is an important factor. Now I've got all the rewards out here and I've collected the event point requirements. And what I've done is I've kind of predicted or estimated the cost of all of these events based on the way that those events work. So for example, artifact enhancements, both of them were 4,775 event points required to collect the full amount of Titan points. That roughly equates to about 20 million silver, 
because it's very similar to our fusion events and they cost around 20 million silver on average. You can optimize that. You can kind of use different tricks and tools. But on average, if you take the algorithm in the game, it's about 20 million silver per event. So overall, from a silver perspective, because really it's only artifact enhancement that silver really applies to here. There's obviously silver needs for in terms of like summoning and upgrading champions, but they're not really a direct cost of silver. It's about 40 million silver overall. And I've averaged things over a daily average. This hero, this Titan event lasted 12 days. So we can see on average, how much would you need to collect per day? And that's about 3.3 million silver, which in all honesty, it sounds like not that bad, but probably is actually quite a lot if you think in 12 days, in basically less than half a month, you need to burn through about 40 million silver in just two events. It's actually quite a lot. Now, when it comes to these summoning events, as I said, there's normally three summoning events. You don't have to do all of them and you don't have to use, like these are basically if I did it entirely per shard. You don't need all of these shards to finish the event. You would just need one of these. So for example, in order to get the 200 points, I would have needed to summon five sacred shards. I could summon three sacred shards and a couple of primals, but that is, the, it's very difficult to, to kind of do all the different combinations because, you know, I could have like 12 voids, 10 primals, one sacred. I could have three sacred, two voids. You could do loads of combinations. So this is the easiest way that I feel I can do it is kind of separate in terms of the total type of shard for each event. So you can see we needed five for the hero's path. We needed 8.2 for the summon rush and 20 for the deck of fates. Now the deck of fates is a little bit subjective as well because you could have got lucky and you could have flipped all of the Titan event points in the very few cards you summoned. Or you would have to go fully deep and flip them all. I've assumed you would have had to flip them all. So I've just assumed this, but we can make some estimations here. So in total, in terms of the total shard requirements, which is probably the most relevant here for the comparison with Wixwell, you would have needed 33 sacreds if you went full to the deck of fates, 83 primals, 178 voids, or 588 ancients. One of those four set numbers in total, which means on average, this is what you would need to collect per day. And you can quite clearly see these, these averages are absurd. Like you would never get three sacreds a day. It's never going to happen. So it's, it's a lot of saving up. Now I will say the deck of fates puts a massive asterisk on this. You could easily halve this number. But it, it depends on RNG and it depends on if you saved enough. You could even skip the deck of fates completely. If you skip the deck of fates completely, let's just add a skip column here. If you were to skip the deck of fates completely, you can see the shard requirements come down much better. Now you only need 13 sacred shards, 33 primals, 64 voids or 280 ancients. So you could absolutely, if we, if we were to play this efficiently, go, well, we'll skip the deck of fates. That leaves us with... 100 points to skip and then we could probably skip 100 points from somewhere else like you could take away 20 million silver if you wanted to maybe i would suggest the ones that a lot of people skipped would be some of the dungeon divers because they equate to the majority of the energy but you can see there's not that much you can skip like let's just clean it up and maybe skip some of the the champion training here because again you wouldn't be able to skip all the heroes part you could probably skip half of it and I think it was like basically one side. So if you kind of skip half of it, let's just basically make this a 2.5 instead. Let's just halve all of this row here and make it more accurate to what we would do. This is like the absolute bare bones. So the absolute minimum you would need to get this soul based on the fact that this is now going to give you 100 points. This is the minimum you would need is 11 sacred shards, 27 primals, 49 voids and 243 ancients in individual rows. So basically, if we compare it to currently right now with Wixwell, which is a times two sacred with a sum summon rush event, it's 20 versus 11. And that's a quite a big difference, if you ask me. That's 20 versus 11. Right now, if you want the five star soul, you need 20 sacreds. Before, you would have needed 11. But here's the caveat you've got all these other events you have to do to get the soul in the Titan event. You need the 40 million silver. Right, if you're going to skip the the deck of fates and you're going to skip the hero's path 100, then you can't skip anything else. So that means you are investing 40 million silver. And the big kicker is energy. Now I've estimated the turn attacks take about a thousand. This is based on a stage 10 hard doing around about the good to average turn count. So for example, in Spider 10 hard, that's about six turns, which is I think a pretty good way of doing Spider. I think it's six to seven. Most people do Spider 10 hard. Um, I think Ice Golem is around about 80 turns and I think Finite's around about 70 to 60 turns that I've estimated on. It can go up about 100, it can go down about 100, but on average the turn attacks are around about 1,000 to 1,200 energy. But the real kicker is these Dungeon Divers. At 4450, 
I've averaged this based on doing stage 20 spider, which is about 12.8 dungeon diver points per run. That's going to require you to run about 340 runs. And it roughly works out that you need about 6,940 energy per dungeon divers. So you can see like most of the turn attacks are fine. It's the dungeon divers that the real are, are the kicker. On average, you would need 18,880 energy, which equates to about 1,500 energy per day. And when we think about how much you get per day as an energy refill, you get naturally about, I think, three lots of 130 a day. I think that's the way it works out. So it would probably be 130 plus 130 plus 130. You normally get 50 from the advanced mission. You get a free refill from the advanced mission and you get another free refill from your basic mission. So just doing your missions alone gets you 700. Often you'll pick up like 100 to 200 to 300 in Doom Tower, or maybe you'll have something in Centranos. So you could add on top of this maybe another 500 if you're really being, you know, being generous here. So you can see we don't generate enough energy in a day to do this. This is a negative sum environment in the sense that you will not generate as much energy per day to do this event which means you have to then dip into your gem stockpiles, which to some extent is fine, but that's really interesting to see that you can't actually earn enough energy to do the event you are gonna have to spend in some other ways. So really, what does this show us? Is this actually better than just doing a one-off event? Well, one of the things I will say is all of these events are going to give you more rewards than the one-off event. Keep in mind, we've already determined that it's more expensive in terms of shards to get the Hero's Path five-star soul, right? It's, it's near enough double near enough double the amount of shards that you need to be able to get it all of these other things yes the energy cost is pretty significant don't get me wrong but would you be running this energy regardless would you be doing these tournaments anyway some people would argue this is an opportunity to do minotaur i absolutely accept it don't get me wrong some of these events like classic arena to me is pretty much a free win you just run your, 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 your refills. You should be able to do it so long as you're in a reasonable tier and you're winning at a pretty high rate, right? You don't really need to work hard for these classic arena takedowns. The finite tournaments, like I think even if you're running them not stage 10 hard, you're probably looking at around about maybe, you know, 2,000 energy or 1,500 energy. It's not adding significant amounts. Um, the Dungeon Divers is the real big kicker. Absolutely is the real big kicker. But all of these are going to give you more bonus rewards. Things like you're going to get extra chaos dust you're going to get extra coins for different things you might pick up an extra book like an epic book uh, we haven't really calculated the champion training here this is going to be another factor that i probably should add in because it's very difficult to know where you're going to consume your champion training you're just going to do it through brews are you going to do it through campaign you know this might run alongside a dungeon diver so maybe you run the training in the campaign with the dungeon diver so the energy that you're spending for the dungeon divers here is actually offset there, there should be a bit of a, a an asterisk for this one champion training that we have here to kind of go, you know, maybe that might cost you 5,000 energy just to add it up. Maybe it does. I don't know the details, but I know that a lot of people will have a lot of brews, chicken saved up. So you can easily do it energyless, right? You can easily do it just in brews, potentially, uh, if you've got all the right material. So that is one asterisk here. And obviously the fusion warm up is a free 100 points. I think it was like upgrading two artifacts a day. So it's not really that big a deal. But I would argue that actually this model might actually be better than the Hero's Path. You would think it's not, but actually maybe it's better based on the number of shards. A lot of people will think, oh, you need a lot of shards for all these things. If you manage this properly, you don't actually need too many shards. If you commit to the right setup, like you, if you commit it all towards the Summon Rush here with the 8.2, then you don't need too many. Whereas with the current one, you need right after basically a fusion is completed where your shards may have been diminished, 20 to get that soul you don't have any time to extend the cost here for example the hero's path was the first thing that started well i only needed 2.5 that gives me a whole nother like four to five days to work on clan boss rewards to work on climbing the doom tower right now for example a new doom tower rotation has just started on top of that is a sacred shard we won't earn that sacred shard before we actually complete the hero's path so that means that has to go to a different event which is fine but if we if we were doing the titan event there's a very strong possibility that this summon rush would not have been active until we would have had that sacred from the top of that tower, which means that we would have had a free sacred, essentially, if you've climbed to the top of Doom Tower. So personally, for me, I actually think the Titan event model is better. I think it gives players more opportunities to succeed because it gives them more choice. You have 250 points spare. So if you wanted to, 
you could absolutely have skipped these events here, right? So if we just put this back to what it was, which I think was 17, 30, 12.55, you could absolutely skip this if you wanted to, because you can skip 200 and then put all your efforts into the deck of fates. Would it make it more shard efficient? No, but would it make it more accessible because you've had more time to earn those shards? Possibly. And the deck of fates is also a bit of an RNG fest where potentially you could have got there quicker without the shards. And I think it was also a training event there as well. So you could have caught, you could have done some training instead of directly doing shards. Whereas really right now, you have to either commit to extreme training with not much energy that you saved up, or you have to commit to all of your sacred shards that you don't actually have because you've just used them for the fusion. That's my position. I found this exercise really interesting though to see how the energy and the silver are not sure of the shards. I actually realized that the shards for the Titan event is not as bad as it feels. Yes, there's always three summoning events, but actually because you get, can skip 250, you can always skip one of them. And it's really the energy that's the biggest pain in the backside because you, you just don't earn enough. These dungeon divers are very extreme requirements for energy. And I think that is the big kicker here with this. So it's very interesting to do. So let me know, guys, what do you prefer? Do you think the Titan event is better? Or do you think this one-off hero's path or one-off sort of deck of fates model is better for you for getting this five-star soul for the fusion you've just done? My personal opinion, I would much rather prefer the Titan event. More rewards... And also there's more reasons to do stuff. Whereas at the moment I feel like there's a dragon tournament on. I don't really plan on doing that. Technically I can skip it and go do Minotaur, I guess, which is great. And it's a nice breather. But sometimes you, you know, you kind of want to have what's my next daily activity. And I do kind of like that. But let me know in the comments below what you think. And guys, I'll catch you in the next video.